Welcome back to the Vagrant from Scratch course. In this video, we're going to walk through the steps required to install and set up Vagrant so that it works on a Windows 10 machine. To follow along, all you really need is a basic familiarity with the command line and how to install applications on Windows. Let's get started. As we mentioned in a previous video on the course, Vagrant is not the software which actually runs your virtual machines. That is done by a hypervisor. In our case, we're going to be using VirtualBox as the hypervisor because it's the easiest to get started with. Not all versions of VirtualBox will be supported by Vagrant. Head on over to the Vagrant documentation page at vagrantup.com slash doc slash VirtualBox to find out which versions of VirtualBox are supported. In our case, we can see that the latest version of VirtualBox that Vagrant supports is the 5.1 series, so that's the one we're going to need to download. To download VirtualBox, go to virtualbox.org and click on the downloads link. Now we need to check that the latest version to download matches the supported Vagrant version. In this case, the latest version of VirtualBox is version 5.2, but we know that Vagrant currently only supports the 5.1 series, so we will need to choose to download the previous version. In the future this will change, as Vagrant releases a version that supports the latest VirtualBox. Let's go ahead and download the 5.1 series Windows installer. For the installation process, we can just go through with all of the defaults and accept any of the prompts which appear. To install Vagrant, head on over to vagrantup.com and click the download button. You can see on the page that the latest version for us is version 2.0.0. Scroll down to Windows and choose the installer for you. For us that is the 64-bit version. Once the installation has finished downloading, open it and choose to run it. Once you have read and accepted the terms of the license, you can just carry on the installation with all of the defaults. I've sped up the video here, so don't be surprised if the actual installation takes a number of minutes on your computer. Once it's complete, you'll have to restart your PC. Now that we've installed everything required, including VirtualBox as a hypervisor and Vagrant itself, we need to test that everything has been set up correctly. Create a new directory somewhere and open a command prompt so that it is in that directory. A word of advice, when working with Vagrant, make sure that the path to your project directory does not contain any spaces in it, because sometimes this causes issues. It is best to avoid these issues by using dashes or underscores instead of spaces in your project directory name. You can see that I've chosen to use dashes in my project directory, which is called my first Vagrant VM. We're going to run through a whole bunch of commands to test that Vagrant and everything else has been set up properly. I'll try to explain these commands briefly as we go along, but don't worry if you do not understand it, because I'll be covering them in much more detail in a later video. Right now, the point is just to verify that you have set up Vagrant correctly. The first command you should run is vagrant init bento slash ubuntu-16.04. This command will put the default configuration file into your project directory for the Vagrant virtual machine image provided by the Bento user that is labelled Ubuntu-16.04. The Vagrant virtual machine image is known as a box and will be pulled from the public box catalogue. We will cover this in much more detail in a future video. Now we can run the command Vagrant up to bring up the Ubuntu-16.04 virtual machine. Since we do not actually have the box for the VM available locally, Vagrant will pull it from its public catalogue. Once the box has been downloaded, Vagrant will start the virtual machine and configure ports to allow you to SSH into it. If you receive warnings stating that the connection has been reset or aborted, don't worry, that's normal. Vagrant is just trying to connect to the VM without it having fully booted. After a while, the connection will be successful, so just be a little patient and the warnings will go away. With the virtual machine running, we can now enter the command vagrant ssh to ssh into the virtual machine. Once on the machine, we can run the command uname-a to see the Unix name indeed being an Ubuntu Linux machine. Let's exit the ssh session. And now, to shut down the virtual machine, we can run the command vagrant halt. And there you have it. You've now successfully set up vagrant and tested everything so that it works. If at any point you receive an error message whilst testing Vagrant, then you should copy and paste the error message into Google, 
and follow the instructions of any forum posts which describe how to solve the problem. We barely scratched the surface with Vagrant in this video. To carry on learning even more, watch the next video in the course. If you want to see more informative content, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.